What am I talking about tonight? I'm talking about God has a plan. The devil has a plan. If you're not careful, you get those two plans mixed up. Because one will be more appealing to you, carnally, naturally speaking. One will appeal to your old nature, the nature you had before you were saved. But the other will appeal to the new man, the new nature that you received, the new creature that you are in Christ Jesus. Raise your hand if you know you got two the two men living inside you. Or a woman if you're a woman. It's not schizophrenia either. Right? It's just the old human nature and the new saved recreated spirit. Jesus lives in that new man. And then he's transforming and changing your soul. As we read the word, as we interact with God, we're being changed. Little by little, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. But we have to understand, man, there's a big difference between just what we think the church is and what God said it is. People today live church largely, they live their Christian life, and they think about church largely like it's a philosophy, as if it's a set of intellectual ideas, as if they're fond of the wisdom, the intellectual side of being a Christian, right? Or is it just like it's just a, a, a basic philosophy, well, you know, I can, church is there, I can always go. Church is not the same without you. Are you here? It's not. I don't know but if you have you know, thought about it much, but you need to stop and think about it. Church is not the same without you, man. You're a contributor in church. Automatically, the day you're saved, man, you're a contributor. That's why I want to know, where's that guy, Adam, the Jewish guy that God saved? I'll tell you what, we've been, we've been bleeding and sweating and praying, man, that Jewish people around here would get saved because we know there's a lot of them. So I'm like, that first one, we're not losing him, okay? If we have to hogtie Adam and get him back into church, man, we're going to eventually do it, you know? Anything short of a crime, we're going to do Mark? He's okay. He's clearing land with his father. Awesome. Well, there alleviates my concern. And he's still right. land with his dad. Good. Glad to hear that. Praise God. I can be like that. Good. Good. You know him. You talked to, you talked to him at the outreach. Excellent. 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 Good. 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 It, it's important for us to think, though, that we need to make sure. We've had some people saved in this church just uh, in the short time that we've been going that, you know, have gone back. We've had some that have wavered a little bit and, and, and come on, but look, here's the deal. You're all an example. I'm an example of something much bigger than any one of us. It's called the church. And I just want you to see it in the pages of your Bible, all right? And then I ask you, I said, look, please know that when you get to the fourth chapter and the second part of that chapter, then there's a practical outline of how to be an effective Christian. How to be someone that can effectively, individually serve God, but also effectively, corporately, fit in to the corporate aspect of God's plan. God wants you to grow as a person, but He wants the church to grow through you growing and developing as a person. Are you here? So go to 1 Timothy with me, and we'll close with this. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Tonight, you know, I know this is much of a sermon. It's just sharing, but sometimes those are the more important things. So please hear, the, you know, the, the spirit and the heart in which I'm saying these things. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. I'm going to go back to the uh, King James Version. Okay, so let's get it straight. Paul's speaking to Timothy, the man, the preacher, the apostle. That's what he's called. He's also the chief overseer of a church in Ephesus. Same church with which you get the letter to the Ephesians in your New Testament. And so Paul's speaking to both things. Timothy, these are the things that I want you to command and teach. Verse 11. Let no man despise your youth. And those things, by the way, are found in the verses before verse 11, the things that he's to command and teach. Those are all the things in chapter 3, all the things in chapter 4, chapter 1, chapter 2, all the things we've been talking about. These things command and teach. That's why I t tend to take it pretty seriously. It's what we're supposed to do. Let no man despise your youth. He was younger than Paul. But be an example. Timothy, you be an example. Of the believers. Notice he's saying, be an example not only to them, but be an example of what a believer is like. In your word, in your conversation, in your love, in your spirit, in your faith, in your purity. Be an example of all those things. 
Until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Man, there's a lot packed in a few verses here. Do not neglect, Timothy, the gift. Somebody say the gift. Okay, all these things are important. What you say, what you do, who you are. Make sure you know what the word says. Make sure you know God's plan. But do not neglect the gift. You're going to need the gift that God put in you to be a good teacher, to be a good example. It was given you by prophecy. The, the, the hands of the elder, the presbytery were laid on you. They spoke spiritually. There was, a, uh, you know, there was an impartation that happened there. Don't forget it, Timothy. God gave you something. And he sealed it through leaders in your life. Men of God that you looked up to. Now I love verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Sometimes I think the New Agers have the, the whole meditation down better than the Christians do. Like, it's terrible. New Agers are all the time talking about, man, see it, you can do it. You know, imagine, use it. And all the time, God's told us that for 6,000 years, man. See these things. Whatever God says, stay in the Word until you can see the Word. See yourself being the person that Paul's talking about here. That's what Timothy's saying. Timothy, listen to me, but see it. Think deeply about it, man. Roll it around. Roll it over and over and over until God begins to bring these things up and make them become alive to you. Meditate upon these things. And listen to this phrase. Give yourself holy. That's holy with a W, like totally. See, immerse yourself as meditation. Immerse yourself in the things of God. You have to draw yourself away from the things of the world. Draw yourself away from the things that your old man wants to do. Give yourself time to meditate before God, to immerse yourself in spiritual things, and then jump in holy. Totally. Give yourself totally to it. Do you know the Christian life won't work unless you give yourself totally to it? I mean, come on, we all know that. 